Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial. Today we are going to make this fun little animation with flying controller and I really hope you will enjoy this one and if you do please don't forget to leave the like and if you're new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want to learn in the most effective way be sure to check out my courses. I carefully designed them to take you from beginner skills through low poly illustrations all the way to full character illustration and with the new one you even get to create a full textured environment. So if you're interested please check out the link in the description. Let's now jump right into empty blender file and first of all let's select everything press x and delete and we'll create the controller now and we'll be animating along y axis so let's rotate this a little bit and let's press shift a and we'll add a plane and now i will just scale this on x axis i don't worry about the scale right now we can leave it quite large this is actually two meters so let's tap into the edit mode press s then x and scale it up like this and now we'll press e and extrude this up now let's press i for inset and let's create an inset like this and now we'll press e and extrude this inside and now we'll separate this face and just push it up a little bit and you will see why a little bit later so let's press p for separate menu and let's separate the selection that will separate it into a new object right here so we can now tab out select that new object tap into the edit mode press a to select all and press g then z to start moving this up in the edit mode and let's toggle the x-ray so we actually see what we are doing and now press e and extrude this down and we can press x and delete faces we don't need that bottom face and now we can turn off the x-ray view and tab out and let's place some controls so let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an ampad and we'll place the cursor somewhere here so shift and right click right here maybe a little bit there and let's press shift a and we'll add a cube now tap into the edit mode and press S to scale it down. We'll create the cursor control, something like this. And now we'll press 3 for face select, alt click the loop all around and press alt E and extrude individual faces. But to better see what we are doing, let's do it from top view. So now that we know we have this selected all around, we can press alt E and extrude individual faces and just extrude something like this. And now let's rotate this a little bit, let's tap out and let's press shift D to duplicate this and right click to release in place. We have two now in place and one of them we'll use as a boolean cutout object. So let's hold shift, select this plane right here and press ctrl minus on an ampad. But for this to work you need to have a bool tool add-on active so go edit, preferences, add-ons, search for bool and just check the box close the preferences and now if you hold control and press minus on an ampad not the regular minus you will create a cutout right here and now if you select the second one that we duplicated and move it around you will see that there's a hole in there we kind of want some geometry right there so let's press h to hide this second object let's select this one and let's go to the modifiers panel but before we switch this let's make sure our normals are correct um, because when you're extruding objects sometimes the normals get flipped so let's select both of these both the boolean object and the plane tap into the edit mode press a to select all and press shift n to recalculate normals uh, but before i do that i will just display these normals and i can clearly see that here we have the normals visible but here they are probably um, inside the object right here so so that's probably the main culprit why this doesn't work so let's press shift n and you will see the normals are now recalculated and this works correctly so let's press alt h to unhide this and we can just make this a little bit smaller so tap into the edit mode press a to select all press s then z and scale it down like this and also we can scale it inside a little bit so while still in the face select mode alt click the loop all around press alt s and then s again for even scaling and just and just inset it like this so that's the controls and now we'll create some more buttons here so let's place a cursor right here shift right click and let's press shift a and we'll add a cube now tap into the edit mode and scale it down let's look from the top by pressing 7 on an ampad so we can see what we are doing tap out and move it somewhere here 
I will create the first button. And again, same as before, we'll use both Boolean object and the duplicate. So let's step into the edit mode and first let's scale it down on Z axis a little bit. So let's press S then Z and scale it down. Now tab out and press Shift D to duplicate. And again, we can hold Shift, select this plane and press Ctrl minus to create the cutout. And we can check the Boolean by hiding the second object if this actually works and it looks just fine. So we can now unhide this by pressing Alt H and let's model the button. So let's select the button object, tab into the edit mode and we can select the top face, press G then Z and move this down. And now let's press I for inset and I want to create the circle right here. And there's a really easy method how to do that. First of all, we'll need another add-on. So let's go edit preferences. And in the add-on section, let's search for loop tools and just check the box right here. And now before we use the add-on, let's press Ctrl R to create few slices right here. Confirm and right click to release. So we have more geometry right there. And now let's go for face select again, select these faces in the middle. And now just right click and you will see loop tools actions right there and you can choose circle and this will create an opening like this and we can scale it up additionally and just extrude it down so this is a very easy way how to create openings like this and you know different kinds of geometry and now we can hold shift s snap cursor to select it to place it down there tab out let's press shift a and we can add a circle now let's reduce the number of vertices to something like 24 Tab into the edit mode and scale it down like this. Press F to fill and E to extrude. Now this doesn't look like much, but now everything will come together once we start to use bevel and subdivision modifiers. So let's select the outer object and let's go into the modifier stack and let's add the bevel modifier and we'll configure it first. So let's add more segments, something like four. We want this more detailed uh, because it will be a close up shot and now let's modify this to something like 50 degrees so it covers most of the cases and now in the geometry section let's switch this to arc they'll make these corners nicer as you can see and disable clamp overlap and in the shading enable harden normals you will see the warning here but don't worry we'll get rid of that later and now we can modify the amount of the bevel to something like this and now we can transfer this bevel modifier that we just configured to all of the other objects except boolean cutouts so let's hide those by using h and let's just select everything and hold shift and select this one as last so it's highlighted in yellow and now just click here and copy to select it so we just moved the same bevel modifier to all of these objects but you can see there are some glitches here and there uh, because we left um, the clamp overlap off so we can really see um, where the bell modifier breaks so first of all i will reduce the segments here to two uh, because i will use the subdivision modifier here and just reduce the bevel so it doesn't break and to make this a little bit easier we can toggle the x-ray and just select this loop press s then shift z and make it smaller so there's more room for the bell modifier now let's toggle the x-ray again and now before we move on to smooth shading, uh, let's add another modifier here. Let's collapse this and let's add subdivision surface modifier and let's increase the levels to two. They'll make sure if you hide this, that we get this nice smooth opening um, from the low poly geometry. And now let's select this piece, right click and shade smooth. We won't be using the auto smooth option right here. And since we are using the subdivision surface, we can afford to make this bevel a little bit more pronounced like this and now let's press alt h to unhide everything else and let's select this one and hide it with the subdivision surface we don't need to work with that anymore and now let's make sure everything is nice and smooth so select all of these four objects right click and shade auto smooth and let's increase to 180 degrees so we basically leave the normal control to bevel modifier and now you can see we have this nice smooth geometry but there are some glitches here and there. If I enable wireframe overlay, I can see um, that this doesn't work so well. And mostly it's caused by cutting into a large surface like this. And Blender has to come out, you know, with these edges that connect um, to the corners of the geometry. 
and you know sometimes it doesn't work so well so for example here so it's always a good habit to kind of slice um, geometry you cut into um, through the whole openings so for example here um, we can just tap into the edit mode and you know try to split this in half and see what that does and you can see it's a little bit better um, we got rid of this edge because blender found another way how to connect but it's not ideal so let's go back and let's try to cut through the middle and i think this is much better just one thing be careful here so you don't go through this rounded corner so you might you know need to shift this up and down a little bit um but all in all i think this looks much better we got rid of all of these you know diagonal edges we just have one through the middle so now we can disable the wireframe overlay and press alt h to unhide that smooth object in the middle and now let's select all of these by holding shift press alt d then x and move it right here so we can create another one just select the boolean cutout object hold shift select the plane and press ctrl minus and to make it sure it works in the modifier stack let's just move this above the bevel just like that okay so uh, that's the controller of course you can have more fun with this um, as you go you can even import um, the real um, nintendo reference and try to model it exactly according to that um, i will link some um, reference image in the description so you can have at it but uh, for the purpose of this tutorial this will be enough and now i will just select everything here and parent it um, to the other object so let's press ctrl p and parent to object so we can now just move it as one object so that's the controller and now i want to create that animation where it flies through um, a looping background of you know like these abstract protruded rectangles and cubes so let's hold shift s and reset the cursor to world origin and first i will add the camera so we can see our final composition so let's press shift a and let's add a camera and now let's press alt r to reset its rotation press g then z move it up and now we'll hold period on a keyboard to switch to 3d cursor or switch the pivot right here doesn't really matter and press r then x and rotate this just like this and now we can look through the camera and see our you know angle and, and to make adjustments you can press g then z twice to go further and closer and r and x twice to rotate around the x-axis according um, to the 3d cursor so we can now start adding the background so let's press shift a and we'll add a mesh and the plane now tap into the edit mode press s then y and 10 so this will create a plane that's 10 meters long and now we can scale it on the x-axis as well so let's press s then x and scale it just like that and now i'll create some of these cubes um, but first i will bring this down a little bit so it doesn't you know sit on the controller so let's move it down a bit just like this and we can now make it even larger on the x-axis and let's hold shift s and snap cursor to select it so we can start adding new objects right there and let's press shift a and we can add a cube tap into the edit mode and scale it down and now press s then y and scale it on y-axis so we create an object like this tab out look from the top and now we can just press alt d and start placing some of these around of course there are multiple methods how to create a background like this you can even use you know geometry nodes and completely randomize randomize it and do like a procedural approach um, but here um, this is so you know small scale thing that i think um, we can benefit from you know placing just some of these objects around and for some of them i will now switch to the medium point and scale them down so we have some variation in size as well and just place some of these around you can get totally creative here and here we can go even smaller and this is basically finished 
um, I will just parent all of these objects to the background so we can move the background even lower a little bit and now select all of them hold shift select the plane press ctrl p and parent to object so they will be moved with this and now we'll place this into a new collection basically so first of all let's select everything that belongs to that plane and press m and move to a new collection and let's call this background and now it'll be really easy to create instances of this background so let's hold shift s and snap cursor to world origin so it's reset and let's press shift a and in the collection instance you can locate the background collection you just created and place it right here and now we can press g then y and 20 and that will move it exactly 20 meters towards the front so this connects perfectly right here and we might need to create more of them but we'll see um, when we actually start the animation so let's select the original plane make sure you are on the frame one let's modify the end of the animation to something like 80 and let's press n for the side panel and here we'll just insert y location single keyframe and move to frame 80 and move these 20 meters so let's go minus 20 and right click and insert single keyframe again make sure you are on the frame 80 so this is something we just created and you can see the other one goes too because that's the instance of the collection and whatever happens in the background collection happens in those collection instances and this is the middle of the collection instance so you can you know multiply um, a lot of them and they will all behave the same so this way the looping of the animation is ensured so now just one thing i will select all here in the timeline press t and switch to linear so we don't have any acceleration or deceleration there so now let's look from the camera and see what we have um this is a little bit too slow so as i said before we might need to you know accelerate this a little bit and the best way to do that is to just you know make the travel of the background a little bit longer so instead of 20 meters it will go 40 so let's go to the frame 80 select the plane and here where it says minus 20 let's enter minus 40 and let's right click and replace single keyframe and now you can see we don't have enough of those but don't worry about that go to frame one and again we can press shift a and add new collection instance press g then y and this time let's enter 40. so now if we look through the camera we doubled the speed of the whole collection okay works just fine and now i want to animate the controller a little bit so let's select it and first of all i want it to travel from left to right in a looping manner and then i want to tilt it a little bit so it flies a little bit like an airplane so let's insert the y rotation keyframe and again this will be a single keyframe here and then we'll insert the x location again as a single keyframe so now if you control tab here in the timeline you will get a graph editor and you can see both of these tracks right here the x location and y rotation and now we can select the location track we can hide the rotation and let's just select the keyframe here in the middle be careful these points on the sides these are handles for the bezier so let's select this one on the frame one and just press shift d press x and move it right here to the frame 80 and now we can add some more so let's press shift d and we can add keyframes like this a little bit above and a little bit below like this doesn't really matter where you place them but for the purpose of this animation i kind of want to have at least some kind of even spacing um, between the extremes of the animation and i can clearly see this is a little bit too much so let's select these two press s then y and just scale them together so we have a movement like this now if you play back the loop it won't be perfect because it will stop and then accelerate again and i want the continuous movement so we'll need to update the handles so let's press a to select everything and press period on the numpad to focus on the curve so we can better see um, the range and now let's select this handle and just move it up so it goes at an angle from the start and select this one so it finishes in a similar angle so now this will you know connect much better and we have continuous movement 
and now it's all about the pacing of the animation so you can try to move this around to get like smoother movement just like that and now we'll create the rotation that will work um, with this kind of rotation so now we are already going to the right so we want to be tilted um, from the beginning so let's hide this and let's unhide the Y rotation and now select this keyframe and again make sure you don't select the handle that you select the keyframe here in the middle and now press G then Y and move it up maybe even more something like 10 degrees and again we'll duplicate this so it can repeat so press shift D press X and duplicate it to the other side so now it looks like this and now we'll need to start the rotation to the other side before we return so here we can duplicate this and just move it down like that and maybe even more and again this is not a great view of the animation so now that we set the range for these angles we can select all and press period on a keyboard to zoom to our animation and now we can see it kind of evens out goes to the other side but i think um this could be more so let's move it down a little bit so there's a larger tilt and let's see what happens here and that actually looks quite nice um i really like this uh, but it looks a little bit choppy and that's because of the frame rate so let's go to the output settings and let's change the frame rate to 30 and we'll get much smoother animation now and to make this a little bit more interesting we can move the controls as well so let's select this let's place this on a frame one and again we'll insert y rotation single keyframe and according you know to this movement we'll move this up like 10 degrees maybe not so much duplicate it to the other side and now just switch the direction right here same as with the rotation so it works as expected and to add a little bit more detail um, we can add some action to the button so we can move both up a little bit by pressing G and then Z twice now select the first one first of all let's go to the frame one and let's insert Z location keyframe so right click and insert single keyframe and here on the side panel if you don't see it you can press N here as well you can add modifiers and we can add a noise modifier and that will make this a little bit hectic so we'll need to increase the scale to something like 5 and then choose subtract instead of replace so the button goes down but the range is too large so we need to set the strength to something like 0.1 and you know we have a little bit of that button bashing and we can make it a little bit faster by lowering the scale and i think this works just fine so um that's basically the animation to uh, make this look a little bit better um we can for example add some bubble modifiers to those objects as well so you know just select one of them hold shift um, select the controller and just transfer the bell modifier here as well and now we can modify the amount and now we can select all of the others and you can do that here in the outliner uh, for the collection so let's select the cube and hold shift select all of them and then hold shift and select this one as last and just transfer this modifier and right click and shade auto smooth and now let's set up some basic materials and render settings so let's select the controller press period and we can go to the render settings and in the EV let's switch on ambient occlusion bloom reflections and refraction and then switch to cycles I will go for GPU enable the noising and for animation I need to use optics and then in the performance I will reduce the tiling to 512 and for the preview animation I will use just 32 samples so we have some quick render preview and now let's go for the camera view and we can press ctrl b to limit our render preview only to the camera bounds 
and see what we have here but probably that won't be much because we don't have any lights in our scene so let's press shift a and we'll add a light and area light and i will press g then z move it up and we'll need to make this quite strong so something like 1500 press r then x and move it like this so we get some you know opposite light and i think something like thousand should be enough and let's make it a little bit larger bring it closer maybe move it to the side a little bit okay and now just select the object and we can add some materials so here this will be like a light gray here in the middle we need a darker color but maybe with a little bit of a roughness and this should be white or at least light gray and this button should be red maybe with a little bit of a gloss so let's reduce the roughness and here we can add the black color and make it more glossy like that and for the background let's just choose some solid color but make sure you choose the background here in the collection and let's add a new material let's make it darker and let's increase the roughness and then we'll need some general background as well so let's press shift a and we'll add a plane just make sure you are not creating it in the background collection we want to move it into you know general collection area and just scale it up and press g then z and move it down maybe make it even larger move it towards the front and let's add some material there as well we can make it black for example or really dark um, for a second here and increase the roughness so now this is what we have here um, to make render a little bit more interesting uh, make sure in the render settings you enable motion blur as well and then in the camera settings we can go um, and add a depth of field and choose our controller as a focus object and reduce the f-stop to something really small so we get this nice blur in the background and now we can go into the world settings and increase the world brightness and add some world color and then you know you can get a little bit creative with the lights maybe duplicate them and create some colored lights all around make this a little bit blue so you get something interesting now for these background cubes let's create a custom shader so let's select one of them doesn't really matter which one and go to the shader editor and let's create a new material and we'll won't be and we won't be using principal shader so we can press x and delete that and let's press shift a and we'll search for fresnel let's press shift a and we'll add a converter and color ramp connect it right here then you can hold ctrl shift and click whatever node to preview it directly to the surface um, if you don't have it just go edit preferences and search for wrangler and you can just check the box and you will have these shortcuts active and now we can work you know with these reflections on the side and create a mask that looks like this and now we can press shift a and add a mix shader and connect this to factor and let's press shift a and let's create first um, emission shader and then we'll need some glass shader or something like that we can use it and then connect these now if you preview the mix shader you should get something like this um, though we might need to modify the color and we might need to flip this to the other side So now we kind of have these cool, you know, glass cubes um, that have glowing edges and we can really ramp up the glow here. And then we can add a little bit more of the violet color to help, you know, with that synth wave feeling maybe. And just for the last detail, we can select all of these cube in the background collection, look from the front and just duplicate them using Alt D like this. And now if you look from the camera 
you will see more more of them in the background okay looks quite nice so we can just switch this back um, to the animation to the timeline let's make this a little bit smaller and yeah now basically just go to the output settings um, choose your folder right here switch to ffmpeg video go encoding and mp4 and then in the rendering you hit Control f12 or render animation and wait it out and you should have your animation ready in the location you specified so that's it for today's animation i really hope you enjoyed this one and again if you did please leave that like and if you're new around here and want to learn more about 3d and blender please hit that subscribe thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day Oh.